On August 12, 1985, a Japan airline flight with 524 passengers on board took off from Tokyo bound for Osaka. Unfortunately, only 12 minutes in the flight, the Boeing 747 experienced a catastrophic structural failure causing the cabin to decompress. Despite the pilot's effort to maintain the control, the plane flew erratically for 32 minutes before crashing into Mount Takamogara. Hi, I'm Hilal Alam from Al Zebra. Let us see how a mysterious engineering misjudgment caused the deadliest single aircraft accident in aviation history. Let's review some fundamental concepts in engineering mechanics before delving into the details. When a matchstick head is pressed against your finger with force, no harm is caused. However, when a needle is used to prick with the same amount of force, your finger starts bleeding. The reason is the concept of stress. In simple terms, stress is the amount of force exerted over area, meaning how the force is landing on the area. When a matchstick is pressed against the skin, the force is distributed over a relatively large area, resulting in a lower stress concentration. In contrast, when a needle is pressed against the skin, the force is concentrated on a single point causing a higher stress concentration. This high concentration is strong enough to cause the skin to tear and bleed. If a structural element is subjected to a significant tensile or axial force, it will fail by axial deformation. On the other hand, if a large lateral force is applied to the element, it will fail by shearing. Now let's talk about rivers. Rivers are used to join two plates of a structure. When an axial force is applied, the river's cross-sectional area is subjected to the force. If the force is too great for the cross-sectional area of the river to withstand, the rivers will deform. Therefore, the strength of a river depends on the cross-sectional area which is calculated as pi times the square of the radius. Failure to consider this crucial factor contributed to the collapse of the Hyatt Regency walkway in 1981. This occurred shortly after the structure had crossed the relevant fatigue limit. I have released a video on it and the link is provided below. In case of the lateral forces acting on the same plates, two areas are considered. The cross-sectional area of site that the height and the diameter of the shank and the cross-sectional area of the cylindrical part of the shank need to be considered. If the allowable stress is exceeded in either of these areas, the rivet will deform. The collapse of the Bedkolo Bridge in 2016 is a prime example of a failure by the design engineers to account for the shaler stress. I have released a video on it too and the link is provided below. Unlike the Perkolo Bridge and Hayat Regency collapse, the Japan Airlines 123 incident was not caused by the design engineer, rather it was attributed to maintenance engineers. To gain an understanding of this, we need to go back 7 years. On June 2, 1978, during landing at Osaka, the pilot pitched the same plane up too steeply, causing the tail to strike the runway. This resulted in significant damage to the aft fuselage skin and aft pressure bulkhead along with multiple structural components. Between June 17th and July 11th, the aircraft underwent significant reconstruction to the extent that Japan Airlines did not have the expertise to carry out the repairs themselves. Consequently, they contracted a team from Boeing based in Tokyo to perform the work. The air pressure bulkhead sustained major damage during the accident and is a crucial component that separates the pressurized passenger cabin from the unpressurized space inside the tail. Its umbrella-like shape consists of 18 sections which are connected to each other with two rows of rivets. A significant portion of the air pressure bulkhead needed replacement. Boeing engineers fabricated a new section to be riveted onto the remaining original sections. However, during installation of the new bottom portion, they discovered that the joint overlap was inadequate for the installation of two rows of rivets. The solution proposed by the engineers involved inserting a metal splice plate between the overlapping edges of two adjacent sections. These plates would extend above and below the overlap and be secured by three rows of rivets. By doing this, both skin sections would be attached to the splice plate by two rows of rivets. During the repair process, 
the engineers made a colossal mistake by using a splice plate that overlapped only two of the three rows of rivers. The one lonely row caused a gap and a filler plate was used to close it but it was not serving any functional purpose other than filling the gap. The work was reviewed by a Boeing inspector shortly after the completion but they failed to identify the improper execution as the mistake had been concealed by the fillet seal. By using only one row of rivets where two air necessary, the strength of the joint was reduced by 70%. However, the aft pressure bulkhead was originally designed to outlast the aircraft itself, exhibiting significant fatigue resistance. As a result of this significant error, on the 12th of August 1985, during its 12,319th flight, the continuous shear force caused by fatigue exceeded the stress limit leading to the failure of the rivets. This ultimately resulted in a fatal incident. The Aircraft Accident Investigation Commission released a 332-page report on the crash, but it did not address a crucial issue. Why did the Boeing engineers who conducted the repair make such a catastrophic mistake? Surprisingly, the report did not seem to consider this question at all. Boeing faced a criminal investigation and 20 members of the repair team were charged, but the charges were eventually dropped. This was because Boeing did not cooperate with the investigation, citing a US policy that aviation personnel involved in accidents should not be charged unless they had intent to cause harm. The absence of a clear explanation has left the Japanese public with a lasting impression that Boeing was not entirely responsible. While Boeing was held accountable in Japan, the airline bore the burnt off the aftermath. Following the crash of Flight 123, the CEO of Japan Airlines resigned from his position. Additionally, a maintenance engineer from the airlines committed suicide as a form of apology for the disaster. Even after more than 35 years since the disaster, the public's trust in the company has not been restored to the same level as before the crash. With this I sign off, we will meet in the next video. Till then, goodbye.